It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We will be looking at the pages of our dailies, and uh, we do have a guest joining the conversation, Kola, Tunde Kola Wale. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Tunde Kola Wale. Good morning, Messi. How good. was the night? Very well, thank you for asking. Thank you. All right, I'll start off with the leadership newspaper and the attention would be on the top stories or top caption on the leadership newspaper. The board header reads, Niger's problem have defied cosmetic solutions. IBB is quoted on that, says leadership must be occupied by competent visionary leaders or individuals. Nigerians or Nigeria must be rescued from wrong drivers. Uh, you also have new movement emerges backs southern presidency communal clash niger court sentences 11 to death by hanging and president muhammad buhari confers national merit awards on three scholars court dismisses suit against zamfara governor's defection to the apc quite interesting as we as we you know look ahead of uh, 2023 cbn's naira support dips foreign reserve despite the rising oil price and committee suspends creation of agencies. You can't turn us to slaves, as we tell the federal government, as they plan to embark on another strike. That's it under leadership this morning. Let's move straight to stories coming on the front page of the Independent, the Daily Independent. It is uh, the major headline there: upcoming mega party revs up process to square up to PDP APC upcoming mega party revs up process to square up to PDP APC it's be quite interesting to see how that plays out it has a rider sets up transition harmonization council APC hails court ruling against so okay rather Zamfara governor's defection at the top of that front page why there is fields scarcity ND NMDPRA NNPC increases supply to bridge gap. Senate OK six new law skills across geopolitical zones. Um, and the last few headlines from that paper. Don't remove labor from exclusive list, NLC warns federal government. Reps summon five ministers, permanent secretaries over financial infractions. Gunman kills eight at Imo Council headquarters. Tension as gunman gunmen kill a number official and CJN hits back at AGF over utterances against judiciary. Interesting. All right, away from the Daily Independence, let's look at uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. Adulterated petrol, federal government may return fuel to suppliers. 100 million litres affected, says marketers. And that uh, you find on the Punch newspaper this morning. Fuel short shortage queues may last till weekend says marketers. NMPC increases supply to bridge supply gap and recalls polluted fuel. Uh, this is what you find on the Punch newspaper this morning. Nigeria made 1,350 calls about data breaches in 2021. That's according to a report. You also find Rep's daily fuel consumption panel begins probe behind closed doors. And just before we move away from uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. APC governors awaits Buhari Al Makura Musa led in chairmanship race. And you also have bandits raid casino communities for hours, kill 13, abducted village head others. And uh, Senate approves seven new law schools and campuses, and you have the figures rising to 14. Another one says, subscriber grown as Galaxy Backbone Battles Portal uh, Breakdown. Now, this is some of the headlines on uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. And straight to uh, the final paper, The Nation, on Wednesday with the lead headline, Pressure on Buhari to Reject Reworked Electoral Bill. Pressure on Buhari to reject reworked electoral bill uh, with a rider. I brow on the provision that ministers should resign to contest for office. And also I need to get list of candidates August 18. At the top of that front page, uh, charges dropped as hotelier, others 
against Hotelier others over OAU student's death. That's a spin story that has gripped uh, uh, the nation. Senate OK, six additional law school campuses. Lagos Blue Line is 85% ready, says Lamata MD. Jam shifts UTME registration by one week. Another story from the nation newspaper, South South's governor's resolute on power shift, says Akeridolu. NNPC subsidiary links scarcity to withdrawal of toxic petrol. Shortage will continue, says Makta, says Marketers. And finally, gunmen kill 10 in Imo. Uh, firms settle on $3.3 billion Igina project. That's a big one uh, coming there. Those are stories on the front page of the nation so let's turn our attention now to analysis with our guest uh Barry Sakola -Wale is still with us this morning uh, uh mr Kolo, thanks again for your time what are your thoughts on the headline on front page of the nation newspaper um saying that there's pressure on president buhari to reject the reworked electoral bill this is not uh, impossible uh, the I'm not too sure most Nigerians are satisfied with regard to what the National Assembly is pushing to Mr. President to fight. If the democracy grows, we must make sure that there are adequate clauses in the Electoral Act that will guarantee a clear and fair election. The truth of the matter is our allies will be out of business. They are not ready, they are not prepared, and they are not willing to consider an inch to ensure that we have a clear fair election. That is why you find out the electronic transmitter of laws from right from the polling uh, center, having adequate power to actually complete or study the returns on these different pieces, are not given adequate power. So even though the electoral act has been worked out now, there are still some allies who are still not satisfied with some of the clauses that are in there because it is going to be an impediment to them in their desire for manipulation and ensure that they win at all costs. All right. Uh, now, uh, yeah, as a follow-up, uh, the, the, the contentious issues now um, no longer direct primaries um, as it was the first time, uh, but we're looking at the, the clause on ministers or, let's say, government appointees, you know, to resign their appointments if they intend to contest uh, for that election. Um, is this something that maybe uh, the National Assembly should have dropped, you know, or is this something you feel is, is, is necessary to ensure that we have a smooth election and democracy is enhanced in Nigeria? Yeah, honestly speaking, I am not too sure that we have seen what is happening now with regard to the appointment of uh, the electoral umpire, the electoral commissioner. And we start carrying members of a uh, political party must be forwarded to the Senate or the National Assembly to be made by the Electoral Commission. It has no precedent. You will remember one of the spokespersons for the President once had a name for the National Assembly to be made an INEC Electoral Commission. Also in the data, we have seen a professor even though we haven't, I haven't personally, they are starting or qualified or have the country proof that it's true that a professor who is the current cast member of the APC is now a minor committee. So, and the constitution and the electoral act are very clear. But any cast member who any civil servant, or anybody who has a different whatsoever, or any of the political parties in the country, is not suitable to be appointed of the National Commission. For here, I wonder if 
and under President Muhammad Bukhari, we have seen a regime of impunity in which names of the outside members of the political party, sympathizers of the political party, those portions of even the perfected who have their names forwarded to our national assembly for appointment of the INEC in the commission. This portends a lot of data for a free and fair election from 2023. And I think all Nigerians to rise up to the occasion and insist that we should abide by whatever the proper and the electoral act there and say. All right, Tunde Kolawale, let's also look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, former military head of uh, state, uh, IBB, has uh, mentioned that Niger's problem have defied cosmetic solutions. We're talking about Ibrahim Babangida. Uh, Tunde Kolawale. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, please, can you repeat that, please? So on the leadership newspaper, we, we have the former military president, Ibrahim Babangida, saying that uh, Niger's problems have defied cosmetic solutions. And uh, you also have him saying leadership must be occupied by competent and visionary individuals. Yeah, I, it's interesting that I think I've been uh, talking a lot with regard to this man. This is a man who has had a year to rule this country and who has had all the opportunity to, put, to give us good government. But rather than give us good government, what did he do? He tried to come to all he had known the best election that was ever conducted in the history of this country, how such a man would have the to recommend to us what he consider would be an uh, opportunity to have good governance, to have a uh, free and fair election, that would see as a person. I don't think he meant to have a If he did, he would have done that when he had a fear to rule the country. I also do not agree with it that Nigeria's uh, problem has devised solutions. Rather, we have not been given the right solution to most of the challenges that we have as a people. Because people consider some of these things, not from an authentic perspective, from very, very selfish end, which uh, is not there. These people have been talking in their recommendations, in all the programs, in all the laws that they are making in the history of the country, they wouldn't have been seen some of the things that they are saying. So, it is not the fault of uh, the people or the law that we have, but rather it is the fault of the people who have been responsible for the management of the country. So, but, but as a follow-up, I mean, if you talk about the issue of cosmetics here, um, he probably will be talking about the fact that we, we, we ought not to look at, I mean, it goes beyond just the surface thing. We need to address the issues Please from the root. Please, can you do me a favor? What would that be, sir? Please, can you do me a favor? Yes, I can hear you. Please, Go ahead. can you do me a favor? What would that be, sir? Hello, I'm not hearing you well. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we, we definitely, we, we have a team of, uh, you know, uh, uh, technical engineers working on it, and I'm sure that we can restore and have proper audio where we have a smooth, com um, you know, communications. We we'll apologize for all of that, but Tunde Kolawale, as soon as we're able to connect with you, definitely get back. Uh, with the issue of having, you know, the former military head, uh, head of state saying that the president, uh, saying that the issue of Nigeria goes beyond uh, cosmetics. I'm, I'm thinking that 
that we're talking about surface issues at this point. I mean, there are a lot of issues that we need to look at the root, the root causes. So it just goes beyond saying, oh, this is what it is, but we need to get to the root of it and address it. And that's the only way because there are structural issues. Most of the issues that we're faced with as a country, uh, you want to agree with me that they are structural issues. And if you don't deal with them uh, from where they're coming from, then it would just be you treating the, uh, you know, just treating the symptoms like uh, the medical prof uh, practitioners would be saying that uh, we're treating some of the symptoms. For instance, the issue of security, uh, if you look at it, you want to find out that it's actually encompassing uh, across the entire country. So in different parts of the country, you have different, uh, the, the issues are not very, they're not the same. So you have issues uh, coming out of the fact that some persons are saying, hey, we are, we're dissatisfied with how resources are being allocated and how we're being treated. And so all of the security issues emanating from that. You also have, you know, the fact that you have a group of persons who are terrorizing or killing people randomly. And so the issues of, you know, are quite different. And if we have to address it, it, it wouldn't just be just saying, hey, we have more security personnel. All right, so uh, Tunde Kolawale, it's good to have you join us. Uh, let's have you share your thank thoughts. You, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Collar, are you there, please? Yes, I am. I am. Okay. Um, um, I think, Mercy, you were asking him a question. So, sir, can you, if you heard her, can you uh, just give us a response to that? that uh, Thank you. Yes, Tunde Kola Wale. So, the conversation, yes. you, you say you do not agree with the former... Uh, military president of Nigeria, and you say you don't agree with him when he talks about cosmetic solutions to Nigeria's no, problem. No, 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 no. Oh. Now, but you also would want to agree with, with me that we can talk about solving Nigeria's problems on the surface. I mean, we need to go to the root of some of the issues, and some of the issues that we're faced with as a country comes out of, I mean, you, you, some people are not satisfied with how resources have been allocated. And that's also a problem. And so if we have to address the issue, then we need to go to the root of it. I agree. You see, most of the problem we have in the country is self-inflicted. Why do I say self-inflicted? Most of the people who are there by now fly from the defendant to the president to the president state. It's not as if that they don't know what should be done. They travel abroad and the people who live there. They see the kind of laws that are being made. They see the kind of infrastructure that are being made from out there. But they live in the cause of corruption, because of their attitude to the better politics, and then because of our vote of the religious issue, rather than approach problems from a very patriotic perspective, from a very political perspective, from what we benefit the character of the Nigerian people. They usually will pay for complex solutions for problems. And that is why we are asking this question. I give you an example. The legal state government does try to establish uh, the blue and the red state line or whatever they call it. Will you believe it that between 1975 and 1983, the Alaska government has paid for the establishment of the monolith in legal state. As far back as making a staff of the state, and then the president of the United States, when he came in as a president of the United States, he just actually to cancel that contract without looking at the name of uh, that process, even though when I was actually a state of France for the real life. And the contractors that can work. We lost that opportunity because of the ability of the future, the system of warning the future. And those people took us to court and won. We have to pay back. We also lost the money we are paid. We have the money we are paid for the construction of that uh, monorail. That is one decision. Also, look at the real time between. Abuja and Katuna. And now on Bulu, if there is a first day that could be done, it could be between the four, the knee, or the tiny level. If you have consulted that day it could be evacuated from materials of the people in the 
and take it to those who don't have the answer. In the way of Napa, and then the finished product, you can also evaporate uh, and bring to the port to be exported as well. That way, now you have the potential to repay whatever money you have used to consult it. But because of political experience, he went and consulted the world in Abuja and Katuna for Paritos Human Capital, which doesn't have the capacity to pay back the gold that were still borrowed to consult that debt. I mean, we are that thing we like. Furthermore, we say we are consulting a real time to the same reporting. But what economic facility is that? So these are some of the things that we see. Also look at very interesting. Even the National Assembly said we wanted to raise for the different political parties. In place, the cause of their own self-interest. They can't confront, they can't confront the first father. Okay. Uh, right. In the different political parties. And so they now want to use the electoral act hmm. to achieve whatever goal they want to achieve. So that they can always get the elected uh, to the National Assembly or that they are okay. So, Mr. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Kolo, let, let's move on to a uh, uh, headline coming from the, the Daily right. Independent. The, the big one there, upcoming mega party revs up process, revs up process to square up uh, to the PDP and the APC. Um, and uh, we're told they've set up a transition committee uh, and harmonization council as well. And uh, the details of that, it says that uh, a new party to square up to the All Progressives Congress and the uh, People's Democratic Party in the 2023 general elections is already putting finishing touches to its registration in order to contest the next year's election. Uh, names being you know, mentioned in, in, in relation to this are uh, the likes of uh, Atayu Jaga, a professor, former INEC uh, national chairman, and uh, uh, part to Tommy Professor as well, Senator Rabiu uh, Kwankwaso, uh, King Simugalu, Obi Ezekwesili, and a host of, host of others. Um, we all know what happened the last time part to Tommy and co, including a former Kwara State governor, um, had a, a sort of a symposium uh, where they were talking about coming up with a third force. And the next day, the EFCC um, picked up the file of that uh, um, uh, former, uh, no, it, I think it was the EFCC, went to see his his property. Um, uh, we, we've heard of this third force before. Do you think that this is something that we should, you know, take 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 on, so take notice of? Well, uh, if uh, we are to the continent, our history, uh, we are to the continent, especially our research, I don't see how the proposal that are being made with regard to this major political party will work. You and I will know the problems we have or the problems that they see as a political party is presently have. They came from different parties. So to say that uh, of the different colors came together, all themselves legacy parties and formed the APC. And for that after because so, always they want to go to the other. Simply because the party does grow organically. If it has grown organically, if they have started from the scale from the foundation and built to stop, gathered strength, contested and won left, and their principles and their ideology are concordant, are similar. I mean in terms of members, the APC for example is about the amendment. We have also talked about the effort of the to the right to have in the past. It didn't work. When you also look at the way that are being mentioned now, people like Atari with the not belong to the PRP. And the PRP ideology a man of good opinion is sociology. I mean the totality. You have people like a party who is a capitalist. You have people like the father who is in who is a Marxist. And in the labor is also that we interested. Within the labor, there are both capitalists, there are Western, there are socialists, there are women, women and all other people coming from different backgrounds. So if that's the case, how will they be able to form the party 
Well, thank you so much, Tunde Kolawale, for being part of the conversation. We really appreciate your thoughts and your time on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Quite interesting um, uh, with those uh, stories. Uh, so many stories, so little time to analyze uh, all of them. But uh, V Breakfast and Plus TV Africa continues. We have a look at what happened today in history. And when we return, we dive straight into our first major conversation on the program this morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Recording in progress. 